All right, I'm going to do my best to try and explain how I deal with Kiriaki super fast, um, some of the techniques behind it, some things you should try and look out for if you're trying to analyze um, Kiriaki yourself uh, and what you might be doing wrong. First, I'm just going to let it play out uh, of this first patient of 5-2 as an example, and then uh, I'll go through and sort of annotate and show you some of the things to look out for uh, and some of the things that I did wrong in this example um, to, to help you get an idea of what's, what's to do. Okay, so there was kind of a lot to cover there, but um, I'll, I'll go through step by step on sort of from start to finish how this all goes down uh, and how I optimize my own Kiriaki to make it better um, and what I can pass on to you. So first and foremost is dealing with these um, sort of initial cuts that you get. Um, I find it's pretty important, in my opinion, to have that uh, dealt with as soon as possible. Because the earlier you deal with uh, these, the earlier you can actually start dealing with Kiriaki itself. Now there is a little bit of debate as to whether you should deal with the big cut first or the small cuts first. It doesn't really matter which ones you deal with first in the case of 5-2 uh, or in uh, other examples like 3-2. Uh, in the extreme ops, it's more important to drain uh, and close these cuts off as soon as possible. They're more finicky, they bleed out. Um, but if you're dealing, uh, doing you know runs on easy, normal, or hard uh, in the full run, it's more important just to get this all cleaned up. Um, personally, you'll see here I drain all sepsis across, suture everything up. There is no hard and fast rule, but uh, that's the way I do it. Um, if you really want to maximize vitals, you should suture up these cuts first. Their DPS, um, their sort of damage. A tick is higher compared to a cut like this. This cut takes a bit more time to actually kick in the damage it does. Um, it's very minimal and realistically, um, it's probably just better to to just deal with this whatever order you find most appropriate. But tool switching, doing the drain first, then the forceps, and suturing everything up all in one go is a little bit easier on, uh, on the tool switching, especially as you'll need to use the sutures at the start of the wave anyway. Um, so speaking of the start of the wave, once this is all cleaned up, the first thing I'm doing here is you'll notice Kiriaki spawns towards the center. This is, at least for this example, um, you can see where Kiriaki spawns because that's always where the start of the cut is. So that's here. It's then cut in this direction. So this gives you two bits of information. One, Kiriaki is going in this direction. Two, you need to suture this cut in approximately the same direction. But also it then gives you an idea of what's going to happen next. Now, something to note is that when Kiriaki makes a cut, when it's either exposed or when a wave starts, it will take its cut, it'll take its point from where it, either it's been exposed or where it's been uh, spawned in, and it's gonna basically take the length of this cut and apply it in all directions at first. And then what happens is uh, you can see here, basically Kiriaki goes, well, I can't do this one, I cannot do this one, so I'm gonna pick randomly from any of this section basically on where I can cut. This isn't exact and this isn't precise, but essentially you know that if Kiriaki spawns over here, it's not gonna be going left. It physically cannot go any further left than the organ boundary. So knowing the approximate organ boundary is really useful. Uh, in 5.2, it's because it's all in the lungs or um, I believe on the kidney and the final patient, it's all a pretty restricted area. For example, in 3.2, however, the area that the Kiriaki is in, is in basically the entire op space. There's only like a few spots where it just cannot be in. So knowing the direction that it's going is way more important than the fact that it can spawn and cut in any direction. Just keep an eye out for where it's where the cut goes basically. That's the main thing and where the cut ends. You can see the cut end, ends around here. So you can see the first thing I go to do is suture it up. Now in this example, unfortunately, I messed up the suture. So my next priority, because I'm just on a flow chart here, is to immediately ultrasound. And you can see I haven't even located Kiriaki yet. I've just hit the ultrasound and then immediately went to go scalpel anywhere in this area. Now, 
you can see that works out pretty well because I just slash in this sort of this sort of shape because I'm trying to catch it anywhere in this area basically because essentially what's happened is Kiriaki spawned, it's come out, it's hit this wall and so done a rebound and turn around and that's why it's here. That's what Kiriaki does. Anytime it hits the organ, it's going to rebound approximately in the same direction. Not 100% of the time, but it is pretty consistent in that sense. So you can see here, I've ultrasounded and scalpeled uh, in this area to expose it as soon as possible. If uh, my suture was successful, this would have also been gone. Um, next, I'm gelling straight away. When Kiriaki is doing this uh, slash in this direction, you cannot hit it with the laser. It's impossible. Um, so instead, rather than trying to hit it and wasting time, gelling this as soon as possible allows the gel to uh, expand out a little bit because I can gel exactly in this spot, but it's going to hit a, a sort of cloud area. The gel is a little bit inconsistent, so it's not great, but uh, it's better to just slap a little bit of gel or even just like a fair amount of gel uh, where it made the cut from where you exposed it um, and then hit the laser. You can see that's what I'm doing here. Hit it once and then I hit it twice and then I go to suture up everything. And this is like a perfect time to suture up because Kiriaki is too busy dying here. You cannot do anything else while it's dying. You're having to wait. So suturing up these cuts is a perfect time because of that animation. And you can see I managed to get both sutures in before Kiriaki actually gives the defeat notification. So um, if you're super proficient with your sutures, uh, it, then you don't really have to worry too much. Um, now, if you aren't great at sutures, Either that you're a little bit slow, or uh, you need to be you need to spend more time on it to get them uh, more precise. First of all, just practice a whole bunch more. Um, you'll get better at sutures with time. Notably, you will uh, get better if you do Paraskevi. Paraskevi relies a lot on good sutures. Um, notably, Extreme Six or Paraskevi uh, in the Extreme Ops, because of uh, the requirement. That if you use Naomi HT, you need to get cool sutures to offset the amount of damage you're taking, basically. So um, learning to do that can really help your sutures. And that's when I noticed a huge bump in, in my own sutures as well, personally. But if you're not great at sutures, what I would recommend instead is to just suture up the cut before you laser Kiriaki. Um, keep in mind, all of the advice I'm giving here is just that, it's advice. I'm not saying do this and you'll get this result. It's more of these are the things you should look out for when doing Kiriaki and you'll get better uh, at kind of keeping up with each of the, the next thing that happens with Kiriaki. So again, first phase uh, and second phase uh, here are the exact same. More cuts made in these directions, which gives you some information on the fact that Kiriaki is gonna probably wiggle its way over here, hit this wall and do a rebound and end up here-ish. This one's gonna come all the way over here and it's eventually gonna hit the wall and rebound about here-ish as well. So. If we watch it back, you can see I suture up these cuts as soon as possible. I don't want that damage over time getting in the way um, because on 5-2, when you have um, the first patient and the second patient, um, the first patient you don't have to worry about vitals, second you do a little bit, but the rest of them, as long as you're keeping on top of suturing up those cuts, you don't really need to worry about vitals. Um, so you can see here, I've ultrasounded here because I believe that you know this Kiriaki is probably Gonna have rebounded by now. It's probably here-ish. I don't know for certain, but it's here-ish. Unfortunately, it didn't get caught by the ultrasound. This one was around here, and it's moved down since. Um, so you can see I've caught the first one. I've cut it, and I don't gel straight away because I know I haven't gotten the second one. Um, and that's when I'm ultrasounding again and just flicking the scalpel. I don't actually check if I've managed to register whether I've ultrasounded or not. I'm just ultrasounding, selecting the scalpel, and slashing. And that's generally what you should do. That's part of the anticipation of doing that action uh, and the result of those actions. You should, generally speaking, for Kiriaki, if you want to improve, um, a lot of this game is predicting the timings for things, knowing how long stuff takes. Um, and this applies to Kiriaki in a very specific way where if you ultrasound, you know that if you hit with the scalpel straight away, it's going to get exposed. Um, even if it's now not there and ultrasounding doesn't reveal it, you have to wait for the ultrasound anyway to fade away before you spam the next one. Um, so in this case here where I've hit the first one, I'm waiting until it's fully, like it's in the outer circle and the middle one's gone before I'm in the ultrasounding again. 
And you can see here that 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 first one I did is completely gone now, and now I'm ultrasounding again. This is because if you ultrasound and then you ultrasound again on the same Kyriaki, you can lose where it is. It's a bit of a weird mechanic. Um, I think that's how it works, at least I'm not 100% sure. But generally speaking, spamming the ultrasound isn't a good idea. Tap it at like a, a medium interval. Don't like be spamming it everywhere. Just tap, scalpel it, tap, scalpel it, and see if you, you get the result. You're more likely to actually get a bit more luck out of that, I find. Um, so now that both are out, I'm going to gel these two cuts. Um, you can see I slather some gel down. It is not great. Unfortunately, it's mostly covering this area or here rather than the two I actually need. That doesn't really matter because I'm trying to just laser these guys uh, down as soon as possible. So you see, I'm sort of flicking back and forth across the area to get them. That's in part because um, when you hit one, it has iframes until you can hit it again. So it's better to just try and hit the next one and then come back to the first one you've hit rather than like trying to hit one, uh, the first one twice and the second one twice. Then again, suturing everything up and finally tapping the gel on this one for the final wave comes in. Mature Kiriaki itself, uh, the first thing to note is you will have seen this pattern emerge. First it does this cut, then it does this cut. So it's sort of made like a weird picnic table sort of thing. And then finally it goes across and it goes, it makes this vertical cut across the entire organ. You get these three cuts. Uh, notice my sutures are covering the entire set of three. That way I can just do the same pattern in whichever uh, direction and it should hit all three. You can see that's what I'm doing for the second one and for the third one. I'm just trying to get all three with some nice big sutures. The grade doesn't matter here. Um, and finally, you can now see that because of the pattern it made where it made that sort of that hourglass, that picnic table, uh, it's now ended up up here. And Kiriaki on 5.2, especially on the lungs, will always be in this upper section. Even when you're on the left lung and you sort of have a bit more visibility towards the top left, it's going to be in this top area. Remember, it's inside the uh, confines of the organ, so it's going to be in this top area. Ultrasounding towards the center top area is usually enough to find it. And lo and behold, you can see here, uh, even like when it's a good distance away, the ultrasound hit it and I'm just flicking to the scalpel straight away. And that's what you should do too. Um, again, gel, laser, suture. Uh, and then Kiriaki uh, will basically do a bit of a weird jump and then burrow in the spot. That's what it's just done here. And the moment it has borrowed is the moment you can ultrasound again. And even if you're kind of imprecise, the ultrasound has uh, this kind of effect where it takes a bit of time for the ultrasound to fully disappear. So even if you're not precise, you can probably just ultrasound and still find it. Uh, as you can see there, I'm kind of just hitting it as soon as I see it dive um, and then repeating. And it says that pro same process over and over. You may sometimes see when you ultrasound, it doesn't do the circles. It doesn't do that animation. That's sometimes where animations overlap and things kind of get confused and the game doesn't display it properly. But rest should still do that pattern of ultrasound and scalpel. As long as you know to yourself that you've hit the button for hitting A for ultrasound, that's the important part. So I would recommend just ultrasound and scalpel straight away. Because essentially you're doing ultrasound, scalpel, gel, laser, suture. You sort of do this, um, this pattern essentially every time. Over and over and over and over. Um, and the more you do it, the better you get it, of course. Um, so you can see that once it's dead, that's it. The patient's done. Uh, when you get to a mature kiriaki, when there's more than one, uh, the goal is to... Like any time there's multiple immatures, ultrasound and expose both at the same time, like as soon as you possibly can. Don't alt cut one out, then deal with it, then deal with the next one. Deal with them collectively. Um, that way you reduce the damage over time that you take um, as a whole. Um, so that should help there. And ultimately, because of how tight the vitals are on Kiriaki, it's pretty important to suture up cuts as soon as you can. That's like the more important thing I'm finding um, when I do these is if you're leaving cuts on screen, anytime I watch a newer runner and they just leave cuts on screen, they then have to waste the time by pulling the syringe and injecting. And that takes an eternity longer than just suturing up the cut slightly earlier or even just like failing a suture and then suturing up the cut again. The sutures are incredibly quick compared to 
injecting. Um, so hopefully that helps. If you can't find Kiriaki, just ultrasound in the middle of the organ, you know, here-ish in, in this example, um, it should help. So, you know, within the confines of the organ, just ultrasound towards the middle. You're gonna cover a good portion of the area. This is just a, like a, an example, it's not exact. And if you don't find it, wait a second. It's gonna hit the confines of the organ and bounce back in, and you can then ultrasound again. You should be able to find it um, on, on that attempt uh, just as easily. Hopefully that helps a little bit more with how to deal with Kiriaki uh, faster. If you have any uh, questions, feel free to just ping them at me in the Trauma Center Discord. Feel free to ask questions there um, in the Second Opinion channel.